Hi, Muzammil Sar again with a different video. Please like this video, share it with as many people as possible, and kindly subscribe the channel. If a centipede had to think about how to move each of its legs, what would be the consequence? According to the 19th century poem by Catherine Craster, the centipede would be immobilized. Let me read this short poem. A centipede was happy, quiet, until a toad in fun said, Pray, which leg moves after which? This raised her doubts to such a pitch, she fell exhausted in the ditch, not knowing how to run. Silly poem? Maybe. But let's dig a bit deeper. Let's talk about centipede effect. Centipede effect was actually coined by George Humphrey. That's why it's also called Humphrey's Law. He said, the centipede effect or hyperreflection occurs when a normally automatic or unconscious activity is disrupted by becoming conscious of it or reflecting upon it. Humphrey also said, no man skilled at a trade needs to put his constant attention on the routine work. He wrote, if he does, the job is apt to be spoiled. For example, uh, a batsman thinking too much about his shot or a child riding a cycle thinking too much about how to pedal immobilizes the action or may find their performance suddenly impaired. In the 38th Discworld novel and the fourth in the Tiffany Ecking theme, a relevant sentence appeals me. If I try to think about how it works, it doesn't work. Robin the Not Tagore, the great Bengali poet, novelist, short story writer, once said in one of his speeches in America, if a novice, if a learner has to draw a tree, she might focus on measurements, calculations, width, breadth, and the height of the tree, and even the sizes and uh, uh, curves of leaves. And then she might start drawing it. But an expert painter doesn't go after calculations. He might just keep in mind the vision, the picture of the tree and take the brush and start. The student, the learner, because she thinks too much on measurements and, the, and calculations about the tree, might get stuck up, might get paralyzed. The painter doesn't. This is centipedes dilemma. In a way it's overthinking. There's another concept about it, a relevant concept, analysis paralysis. If you want to watch full video about analysis paralysis, you could uh, click the link given in the description under the same title, analysis paralysis. But let me put it briefly here. When we have to make an important decision. We try to gather a lot of options so that we may pick the best option and make a decision. And because as the options multiply, complications multiply, we get stuck up, we get paralyzed, and we are unable to make a decision. That is somehow related to centipede's dilemma. Another relevant idea is 
performance anxiety. Before I talk about that, I'll touch upon a few lines from the famous band. The band were a highly influential Canadian-American rock group specializing in roots rock, American music, and blues. See the man with a stage fright, just standing up there to give it all his might. He got caught in the spotlight, but when we get to the end, he wants to start all over again. Performance anxiety is the inability of a performer, especially when he or she is in front of the audience. They may be skilled, may be best at what they do, but the impact, the pressure, the nerves get them paralyzed and they cannot perform up to their standards. The more the actor, the performer, thinks about his or her acting or performance, it turns out to be uh, a paralysis, a complication, and they get stuck up. Now see, there are a lot of different concepts and ideas connected to the centipede's dilemma. Another concept is thought aversion failure. Before I describe it, let me read a few lines from uh, the movie Inception. There's a dialogue. Author. Okay, here's me planting an idea into your head. I say, don't think about elephants. What are you thinking about? That elephants. Arthur. Right, but it's not your idea because you know I gave it to you. There is an other interesting dialogue in the same movie about the same concept. DiCaprio says, What's the most resilient parasite? A bacteria? A virus? An intestinal worm? An idea. Resilient. Highly contagious. Once an idea has taken hold in the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. An idea that is fully formed, fully understood, that sticks. Now, thought aversion failure. The more you think about the thought, it recurs, it comes back, doesn't leave you. The elephant has to be there because I put it in your mind and now I'm asking you not to think about it and that's what is going to make you think about it so instead of asking someone not to think about elephants one might ask someone to think about horses makes sense there is a tall tale about the legendary Jack Daniel it is told he forgot the password to his safe and in utter rage he kicked the safe. His toe got gangrene and he finally died of it. But one of the authors, Mr. Kress, in his book Blood and Whiskey, The Life and Times of Jack Daniel, says, rather claims, Jack Daniel died of some other causes, not the kicking. On a lighter note, let me tell you something about a friend of mine. He normally, usually forgot his passwords. And whenever he typed the password on, the, on his laptop, the computer said, your password is incorrect. Well, then he used his mind he made his new password and that was incorrect. Happy ending. Centipede dilemma is a common thing that happens to almost everyone. Whether it is analysis paralysis, whether it is uh, thought aversion failure, whether it is performance anxiety, we get paralyzed. 
If you keep in mind a few tips, you might not get paralyzed. Never overthink. Never think about the processes that you normally perform without much thought. Flow with the movement and do whatever you're good at. If you're typing, don't think which letters to press, just type. If you're planning to hit your football, don't overthink about the angles and directions, just hit it. Be natural, just be yourself, don't take pressures. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you soon. Have a lovely time.